Hello, my name is Margaret Adele and welcome to the January channel update. I was inspired to do this because I mentioned before in a previous life update that 2022 I am hoping is going to be a mentally transformative year for me. Uh, obviously, like most people, 2020 and 2021 were not good years for me. Um, however, 2021 was actually worse for me than 2020 was, and it was worse in very, very specific to me ways or specific to people who do the same kinds of things or have the same kinds of diagnoses that I have. So it felt off and bad, but like without the community commiseration that 2020 had. Um, and so 2022 is me knowing that I'm still not in a great place, accepting that and taking the small steps and resting to get to the better place. I mentioned it before in other places, but basically this year is going to be focused on me being a, in a better mental headspace at the end than I was at the beginning. And any big resolutions or plans or whatever, if they fall through, that doesn't matter this year. I am not holding myself to any guilt. I'm going to try not to hold myself to any guilt over not reaching those things and not forcing myself as much. Now, as far as the reading goes, um, I did want to do some kind of check-ins on where I'm at for each month. I definitely did not want to go back to doing wrap-ups. I know that those were very popular on BookTube, but the idea of having to describe in depth every single book you read over a month, when you read 10 to 13 books in a month, that's too much. <laughs> Especially when some of them are just meh. Like, the, the romance is you read to distract yourself for a day and then when you move on, you've forgotten literally everything about them. Like that kind of thing. Uh, so I didn't really want to do that, but I still wanted to check in. So how did my January look both in life and in reading? In life, mixed bag. <laughs> um, I definitely am, am feeling lighter just knowing that I am giving myself grace this year. Um, I have actually taken to wearing, and you might have seen it in other videos by now, um, uh, a unikite necklace. Uh, I don't necessarily believe that crystals and rocks have literal metaphysical properties, but I like the idea of wearing symbolism. <laughs> I like the idea of having a visible reminder of what I'm working towards. And this mineral specifically um, is focused a lot on um, recovery, usually recovery from illness, but for me, it's, it's mental recovery, um, balance and emotional grounding, and of course, like so many crystals, <laughs> fertility. Um, and yes, we're still working through all of those fun issues. PCOS is great. Um, so I've been wearing this, and it actually has helped <laughs> with my mindset a lot of the times. Like, the few days I have forgotten to wear it, like, I can't stop pointing it out to myself all day. So it has helped. Um, and then work has come and gone. We've had really easy days and really hard days, but I, I work in special ed with children with behavior disorders. So like, that's just life. You never know what day you're going to get when you walk into work, when you work special ed. <laughs> you know, those people that complain about how oh, their life is in such a rut. I, you don't want it not to be. You can come work in special ed if you don't want ever to know what your day will look like. Um, but I do like the staff culture of, of the new job I joined late last year. Um, so for the most part, I'm, I'm holding firm in that more or less. Although some days have been struggles. We also had some car problems just to really add on top of things. And of course it was car problems while everything was freakishly cold. So it's like, I'm not going to stand out in negative degree weather to change a battery. <laughs> We're just going to have to one car it for a couple days. Um, but that's fixed. Um, medically, everything is still up in the air. I have a test in, in February that I may or may not have to do. I'm really hoping I don't have to do it because I don't like it. But we're holding. We're, we're going through. So how is my reading doing? Despite all that, my reading is actually fantastic. <laughs> uh, I read, as I, as I film right now, uh, 13 books. Um, however, there is still one day left in the month, and I do have a uh, short story collection on my review list, so I might see if I can't get that done in a day and have read 14 books in the month 
Um, and to be fair, a lot of the other ones I read was like I read, I read like the physical copy of Lore of Olympus. Well, and yes, it is is a lot of pages. It's also a graphic novel, so that helped. I also read like a forty page chat book for review. So I I was not necessarily reading a ton every day, and I was actually pretty good about that. Where some days it's just like you know what I'm only going to read like forty pages today, and we're just going to be okay with that. I was really proud of myself for that. Um, moving forward, uh, February really needs to be all about review books because well there has been discourse and my normal reaction to discourse is to uh uphold and shout out the people who are being looked down on in the discourse because it's almost always a marginalized group being looked down on in the discourse uh and this time it was uh queer men and and queer men feeling talked over in their own space by straight women writing mm romances and how toxic those romances can be and it's a whole thing we're not getting into it here uh but <laughs> over the course of uh talking with uh, uh queer men authors about this uh lo and behold i have multiple <laughs> new uh, review books on my list all brought together in one day so my review list is um it's getting up there so i think we're gonna have to make february the month of reading all review books or prioritizing reading review books when i can um the trick with review books is i have to be in a very specific space for it that I don't have to be for other books because you know if I'm reading an ebook on my phone I can like sneak it out during you know if I have 15 minutes free at work I can sneak it out and read quickly and and it doesn't matter if I don't catch a lot or if I only catch certain things I can't really do that with a review book and most of my review books I can't even read off my phone anyway so I have to be like at home with time so I might still end up reading some non-review books just so if I want to read at work uh, but <laughs> I'm hoping to prioritize them. I've got some great ones that I'm looking forward to. So much sci-fi. I have, I have so much sci-fi on my review list right now, and a lot of it gay, and it's great. <laughs> so looking forward to it. Um, I've, I've got, uh, an old author that I haven't read in a long time coming back to the list. A lot of new ones. Um, I've got several trans authors on there now, which I'm happy about, because at one point in time I was struggling to find trans authors to review. Uh, so we're going good with that. Um, and in general, um, my reading has helped. I talked about it in the update that my response to iffy lifetimes is using my hobbies to give me the serotonin and excitement of having something to look forward to. And it's been working <laughs> because I have cool new books that I want to read. And also, I'm doing really good on the Pop Sugar Challenge, which I did not expect. Uh, but this is where we're at. Um, I, I have not done the exact number, but I think as we're at right now, I think I have read 10 books off the list which is literally one fifth of the entire thing the first month of the year now granted um the farther i go the harder it's going to be and the more i'm going to have to like read specific books uh to fill prompts but for the most part uh i'm, I'm doing really well with it um my tbr challenge has also been going really well i have only ever gotten books that i had slots allotted for however review books don't count for that they do not count for either um, getting a new review book does not count as having gotten a new book, but also reading review books don't count towards working towards getting new books, if that makes sense. Like I don't write down that I read a review book and then every two review books I can get a new book. And they're separate challenges almost. So if I do read nothing but review books for the month of February, I won't be able to get any new books <laughs> for the month of February, which will probably be the biggest struggle. So here's hoping I can at least fit in like two non-review books so that I could leave a slot open to get another one. I take that back. Actually, I already have two slots open that I could get two new books, but because I'm doing this slot system where I have to earn the right to get a new book, I've been very picky on what new books I get, uh, which was the whole point of it. The whole point of this was for me to be very, very purposeful in the books I get. But part of this also means that I've been doing a lot of unhauling, specifically of ebooks that I have downloaded off of BookBub from years ago and that I've just sat unread or even undownloaded on my Kindle app. And now I can like look through and be like, okay, Margaret, think hard here. Are we actually going to read this book? No, delete it. Um, and I think I've gotten rid of like, like 80 books off my own TBR that way. It's pretty intense. I think if I work hard, I could get my own TBR under 300. But of course, 
we're not setting that as a hard goal. I just find a lot of serotonin in being able to clear out things and see the TBR drop. So that is more of a, I'm kind of bored. I want to just kind of chill out. Let's go through the list instead of I must delete X number by this date. Um, because again, we're taking it easy this year. No hard and fast deadlines. So if you are the indie authors that have sent me review uh, books, um, yeah, no hard and fast deadlines for that either. I've actually not done terrible at getting certain reviews out before their publishing dates. And I think I could do it again because I still have a review to film for one book coming out in March. So maybe, maybe that's working. But in general, we're not in a totally fantastic place yet. Um, right now, the, the medical things are probably the biggest cloud hanging over me as I sit here. Um, but for right now... We're holding steady. Nothing's gotten worse, <laughs> which the last couple of years, that is about the most I could ask for. <laughs> um, and here's hoping I get to bring you news of more progress at the end of February. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.